Last episode, while repairing our tow rails, we discovered a potential fault with one of our chain plates, so we're preparing to take them out. We need to create alternative stability for the mast as we loosen the shrouds and stays in order to access the chain plates. So Darren's up the mast erecting our inner force stay to help with that process. And while he's up there, he's just doing a general rigging inspection. Jesus. <laughs> wow. I think we've got a leak. We've got a leak. Yeah, a leak or not. Well, the water's not rusty, which is interesting. So, but there is quite a lot in there. Yeah. Okay, here we are again. Another boat project. <laughs> another big one. Uh, the chain plates. Which are these little fellows down here. And uh, we found a little bit of corrosion in one of them. So, we're going to dig them out. And uh, see how we go. Have a bit of a look at them. stain coming out of it so we thought well we better have a look at it and, you know things, that plate doesn't really look that good from here anyway okay when we when we originally started this process we actually didn't know what was in here and we couldn't find out really any information what was what was actually in here so we just started cut, cutting and uh, exposed the old chain or the old chain plate which you know that's the that's the cavity that it sits in and that's the uh, the, the deck level and what some of the problem was that we were actually getting water sitting in in this cavity which is really not a good scenario and we drilled this hole here and it was all full of water so we didn't know what condition anything was in because it was because it's all captivated so that's basically just a casing it, it wasn't solid it doesn't actually hold the chain plate to the boat, so to speak, it's actually the down the bottom underneath the stringer. Yeah, where the, look, where all the strength of the chain plate is. All the strength, or all, all your pulling points underneath this this stringer. This this is just formed up around the plate itself. This was actually full of old ply, which was obviously it all went rotten. So we've dug all the ply out and we've cleaned it up. Um, so we'll just keep the casing there. The casing can stay there we'll we'll actually glass over that whole thing once the chain plate goes back in there it will just glass over that and uh, you know all the strength is sort of around the deck area and under the under the stringer that's this is just um, cosmetic if you like yesterday we took the head saw down so that we could loosen off the furler and then remove the nose cone which houses the bow roller assembly 
We've always wanted to add another roller, so now that we're having some stainless fabricated, it's the perfect opportunity to get this job done. Okay, we got our, uh, our nice shiny new chain plates back. This this particular one's for our backstay, there's two of them. But they're all sort of similar in shape, but some are, don't have bends in them and some of the angles are a little bit different, but they're all, they're all basically the same. We have gone up a size in them, just because we can. The other ones seem to be okay, but we've We've made them a little bit stronger by just going up a size. But anyway, that just hooks under a stringer and we, we fiberglass it in. But if we step down below, okay. I, I can show you exactly uh, exactly what happened. Righty over, honey. Okay, this is our little uh, work shed down here, your little cesspit. <laughs> anyway, this is the bottom of it and this is just sitting that goes up through the deck there and uh, you can see it just sits under the stringer there and there's just a, a little block there that was there before anyway we're gonna just make a nice thick lot of resin and uh, push that up into the resin so it's got a nice uh, nice new little seat there and and then we'll uh, we'll just start to glass that all back in the way it was before Rightio, we've um, we've inserted our, the first of our um, new chain plates, and as you can see, on um, we've mixed up a, a nice thick thick lot of resin there, and uh, we've just popped it in there, and it's all smeared out just lovely, and we've just fared it off with a a little trowel, and we've filled in all the gaps, and I'm quite happy with what happened there. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we've cut all our fibre in various shapes and forms, and I've got it all laid out in a in a little sequence. But basically, that's it's all it's all cut. So when it goes up, I can lay it around this uh, 
this section here and it'll all fold under and I've got all sorts of different shapes going on here for the, the particular layup and in this case I've used a, a slow hardener so it, it gives me a lot more work time so, uh, yeah, because the, the fast hardeners can go off quite quick whereas that's what I've used as the fast on this this particular setup here but on this where I'm going to actually need quite a bit of time to lay all this up and and uh, paint it all on. So you can see we've started well, there's four layers on there at the moment so it's starting to come up, form up pretty nice. Um, I've, I've put a little bit more uh, thick resin in, in the bottom of this to try and make the, the uh, transition for the, the fibre. Some of the heavier fibre doesn't bend that well around corners so I'll put a little bit more uh, heavier or thicker resin in there just to help us out a little bit and bulk it up a bit bulk it up a bit and uh, we'll start layering up some some real heavy fibre there and uh, she should be good okay okay so behind me is the cupboard that our uh, side stay and our aft lower were housed in hiding in, whatever you want to call it. Um, and Darren has been working away with the renovator tool and the grinder to uh, get all of the fiber, reveal them basically from the fiberglass. So I'll just show you um, what we've ended up with. So this is a uh, uh, cupboard. Unfortunately, it's a very small space, so I'll just show you. Um, the one on the left is our side stay and the one on the right is uh, our aft lower. And as you can see, it's actually been housed within a fiberglass casing. And that just means that when it goes through the deck, it goes through on the right angle to suit the actual angle of the stay coming down from the mast. And the plate was actually sitting on the front of it and fiberglassed in and it actually went all the way underneath this stringer with the T and so the T was fiberglassed in underneath the stringer and that's actually what gives it its strength to hold it in so it goes up there and through the deck yeah so this is the uh, side stay comes down through the deck this is actually a bulkhead, so it's bolted through the other side of the bulkhead through onto a steel plate on the other side. So the um, chain plate sits on this side, runs down the side of the bulkhead, and then into the stringer. It's actually got another T that runs through here, through the bulkhead and through the stringer on the other side and it was fiberglassed into that so it's actually quite strong. It actually wasn't leaking but we've replaced it anyway so that'll give you a bit of an idea if you if you are in the case that you have got enclosed chain plates because <laughs> we didn't know what was going to be in here or how it was all laid out. Um, this will give you a bit of an idea of what you might be, expect to find. All right we've got our uh our old chain plate out and um, this is the this is our little problem area might be a bit hard to pick up on the camera but this side's actually quite pitted and this is what really alerted us that we may have a, a bit of a problem and uh, you know it might go for a few more years but uh, I wouldn't like to be sailing too far on it um, it's in surprisingly good nick short of the the uh, corrosion that we've got just at, at the deck level and that's that is the deck level where that that corrosion line is but uh, the rest of it even though we've this this is all captivated in through here and this has actually been sitting in water anyway we'll just pop it in the in the cavity and I'll we'll show you sort of exactly how it fitted in and, and what we've got to do to to uh, to make it right. Okay.
this is this is the deck level right where the uh, the pin is so that's the top of the deck there and this is our cavity that was um, was was pretty much it was full of water because the the seal at the top you know the sun gets to the silicon after a while there's a little dress plate that goes around the top and um, yeah look I I was pretty much onto it but I'm not sure how long the water had been in there but uh, anyway we we drilled a hole at the bottom and water was actually coming out coming out of this this cavity so we really started looking at things and uh, decided that that um, we need to address the problem but <laughs> yeah, so the it's got an actual backing plate as well, like it's bolted through the bulkhead and uh, there's another backing plate on the back of the bulkhead. So that's the backing plate that the uh bolts for the starboard stay come through. Um. And down here you can see that's the last bolt for the starboard stay and then this is the fiberglass in end point of that T section that's at the bottom of that stay. Okay. Yeah, we were we were uh, using a, a two-strand matting. We found was okay, but this stuff here is um, supposed to be quite a bit stronger. It's a it's a triple weave, and it it really works well wrapping it around uh, corners and stuff like that because you don't really want uh, air gaps getting in under it and some of the, the, the heavier fibre it, um, it doesn't mould that well whereas this stuff here is uh, beautiful and pliable you can, you can wrap it around anything and it holds its shape like really well So you'll see here that Darren is, has laid the matting over top of the area that the chain plate's in and uh, he has got a fairly hot mix of resin and he's just poking it into all the areas of the fiberglass matting giving it a really good solid soaking and the paintbrush is actually quite a good way to get it in there <laughs> it's cupboard man. <laughs> I love cupboards. <laughs> so Darren is just finishing off the sanding of the fiberglass sheets that he's put around the um, the chain plate for the lower shrouds. And uh, then I think that might be the last layer and we'll, uh, we'll paint that up. So yeah, pretty exciting. One side down, another side to go. So we're just taping up. Uh, we're just going to start on the port side um, chain plates. Start to get those out. So we are making a little plastic tomb so hopefully to reduce the amount of fiberglass dust in the rest of our little home. Here you go, babe. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So here I am in the back office 
It's actually our uh, art cabin, which is our bedroom. I kind of made this my safe space for um, when uh, Darren's attacking the boat. So yeah, the uh, four-peak cabin is actually full of all the gear that had to come out of the cupboards. And the saloon, as you might have gathered, is pretty much unworkable. It's very, very loud. So I have made an office space at the art cabin and um, this is where I am working away editing videos and um, trying to get the bits and bods ready for us to go offshore. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> Right there, my honey, can I help? Yeah, I just need a spanner and some fresh air. <laughs> oh, you poor sod. You what kind of spanner can I get you? They don't tell you about this in the magazine. <laughs> How's it going, my love? Oh, that's two more out. It's a great job, that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've just got our new, uh, our new bow roller assembly back. Just got a, a nice uh, double put on here. We only had a single before, which was really a bit of a nuisance. If you had to deploy anything else off the bow, you had, actually had to remove the other anchor. So, uh, in amongst all our chain plate scenario with replacing everything, this was one of our little uh, our little jobs that we've uh, had done as well. So, it's lovely, isn't it? And uh, the, we'll put. Put nylon bushes on there. Apparently, um, it's a bit easier on the chain. We'll find out about that long term. I don't know just yet. I think it's lovely. It's simple, and it's got. It'll be really nice if we have to um, deploy a, a para anchor or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, it's. Uh, it won't chafe the line. Well, hopefully, you know, it's, it's just an easy design. Yeah, no, I think he's done a really good job. He's he's done some good cutaways on the on the roller angles. So yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, it's really good. He's put a little bit of thought into it. So. Awesome. Yeah. Great good. job. Great job. Great job. High five. So with the chain plates completed and an upgraded nose cone. It's time to put the head sail back on the furler. Okay, so we've just got some sort of problem with the furler up top, we think. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to haul Darren up the mast and see if we can figure out what it is. in there is um, it's, it's starting to get quite worn so when when the, when this rotates around and this this becomes tied to the mast this is the the halyard that, that holds everything up every time it sort of goes past this point here it, it makes this it, it sort of rocks on itself and it makes this clunking noise it, it's not so much of an issue right now, but it, it probably could be if we let it go much further. And, uh... So with the drum now off, 
Darren's just tying off the furler while we head back to Claude the amazing fabricator to get some new Teflon bushes made up. Okay, so we're all finished up with the chain plates and we're pretty happy with the job that we did. Um, we decided to stay with the original system as it was with the chain plates being encased. Um, yeah, let's think about that. Yeah, there was some interesting um, advice out there to, to how to do it. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, I'll just whack chain plates up the side of the hull and just bolt them on, but it's actually not quite that simple. Um, Sarian's got a quite a big curve in her belly and it just um, it would have been harder to remodel uh, the whole the whole structure of the boat so we just stuck with what what we had it was even though it was a bit of a job but um, it's it actually, turned out quite simple yeah and it's quite a good system it suits the way that she's built um, the bulkheads are already there and um, yeah you know it's lasted 30 years and we only really um, just the chain plates actually weren't that Bad, were they? No, we really only had one that had a, had a bit of corrosion bit of in, it. in it. Yeah. But the rest of them were pretty much, um, pretty much free of corrosion. So. Yeah. So we're pretty happy. Big job, all done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and uh, learnt from it. Those of you that have uh, encased chain plates and have got this job coming up, hopefully you got some uh, some good information out of that. So yeah, um, please keep watching, uh, once again so click the old subscribe button, it's great to have you on board and you'll get notified of our, our next videos when they come out and please give us the big thumbs up as usual and uh, ask us some questions below, we'd love to hear from you. So wishing you a great day from a lovely little hidden gem in the Wit Sundays and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.